Who? Is this initiate? Helping hand. Hello, Joseph. No, it's Abe. I assume you know who I am. It has come to my attention that one of your clients, a certain Cassandra Watergate, is currently held in investigative custody. As far as I'm informed, the both of you have some kind of liaison. While this is not of my concern, it's heartbreaking to know lovers are apart from each other. I'm in a position to change that. If you deliver incriminating material for a person named Abraham Goldfels, oh, a member of the activist group Thought, of whom I know you have been in contact with. That's a really long sentence. Let me know if you're willing to assist me in this, and I'll see to it that Cassandra receive a helping hand as well. A friend. Who is this? Who is this? There are just so many mysterious people. I feel like we should at least get the email address of this person, but nope. Are you kidding me? Is this our hacker friend again? Not sure... No, but he- the way he types is completely different. He's so formal. Laverne. What? Oh, wait. Is this to the same unknown person, though? That just sounds like his secretary. Laverne, please excuse me for mailing you on a Sunday, but I have an urgent matter at hand. I'm driving to the office now, and I need to use my private notebook. Can you please unlock the ID, PC, blah blah blah, MAC address, blah 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 blah, for our local network and server for me? Thank you and have a nice Sunday! It's mine now. Oh, there was one thing I needed to mention. The head engineer warned me that apparently there was a glitch that caused devices we were monitoring to malfunction at times. You needn't worry though, the issue has now been fixed. I hope so, I hope so. Joseph, it's done. Don't work too much. Laverne. He needs someone to turn on his freaking... Uh... Okay. Well, it's not on right now, is it? We just gotta wait till it comes online. Which probably means we should visit that website. Friend me to get express security flaw news. Okay, let's do that first. Mail? Office? A business meeting with a Mr. Yang. I'm sorry, but I don't have the capabilities required for a case of this complexity at this time. A Mr. Yang wanted him to be his lawyer. But he said no. That's scary. What kind of case? Ooh, bank accounts. Dear Mr. Langley, Once again, I want to thank you for having been available for a meeting so spontaneously last Thursday evening. Although I do not wish to rush you, you will understand that in a case like ours, time is of the essence. Therefore, I wanted to ask whether or not you have already come to a decision. A CEO. Maybe some sort of fraud case. Oh, nope. So that was that. Requesting request concerning the investigative custody of my clients. Regarding your request to release your client Cassandra Watergate from investigative custody, we're unfortunately having to inform you that your request is denied. We have multiple indications connecting Ms. Watergate to a group known as Thought, which is in turn associated with the alleged perpetrator of said bombings. Investigations have also shown your client as a potential dangerous individual, which for reasons of protection of the public, based on Section 57 over 2 A and B of the Safety Bill, is enough reason to uphold custody until investigations have been concluded. K. Sanders, who spelled sincerely wrong, Secretary to committing Magistrate Doyle. Hmm. Feedback on your request. Hey Joseph, I've gone through your books for the third time this morning as you requested. You may not notice it right now because it's a slow decline, but you're on your way to hit rock bottom some black day in the future if this business trend continues. 
Excuse me for sounding like a broken record, but these are major issues I see. Apart from your number of clients dropping steadily, your expenses since the end of 2016, especially via that credit card of yours, went up by a whooping 218%. Guess whose fault that is? Any idea what the reason for that might be? Then there is this recurring donation that's been going on for some time. I can respect that you're helping out a friend, but you have to stop at some point, seriously. If all those expenses are a must, well, I would definitely agree with laying off Mrs. Winters, as you mentioned. Due to the fact that your clients are dropping anyway, why have a dedicated secretary around any longer than needed? Or get her to work part-time, or find a person who will work part-time for a lower hourly rate, ideally. Cheers, Karen. Aww, his business is not doing well. Cassandra's using the credit card and somebody... He's making a donation to somebody. Hmm. Mrs. Winters. Business isn't running so well, it seems. Too few crimes, I suppose. We must be doing something right. Not too few crimes, because he turned down the other crime. Ugly, but not of our concern. That was all the office emails. How about the private ones? I need to ask you for a favor. My dear friend, in dubio, if I may address you by that name once more. Ooh. Ah, now we're friends. Maybe this friendship is worth investigating further then. I hope this mail finds you in good health. First of all, I would like to apologize for not having been able to write you as often as I should have. I hope you don't think I've avoided writing, due to asking you about ongoing financial support for Nina. The donation! It wasn't that. Ah, remember how Abraham was saying that we should do something to mutually benefit each other? That must be it then, the donation money for Nina. It wasn't that. I should not have asked in the first place. And yet here I am, asking again. There is a young woman, her name Cassandra, who is a member of my debate club. She has undeservedly stumbled into trouble very recently and requires nothing but the best defense attorney. Of course, you immediately sprung to my mind after the wonderful job you did as my counsel in my case. Of course, you immediately sprung to my mind after the wonderful job you did as counsel in my case. Hmm, without a doubt, you must have heard about the rides of Freedom Plaza two days ago. Probably also about the injured police officer. I will not beat around the bush. Cassandra is the prime suspect for said injury, so taking on this case might bring some PR headwind with it. She claims not to have done the deed, and I'm willing to believe her. Should you be willing to take on her legal defense, I would be more than grateful. I will cover any costs in full, whatever you might need. Let me know your thoughts. Abraham is definitely not poor. Ongoing financial support. That is not a small favor at all. And if he's willing to do that, if Joseph is willing to do that, Abraham must be a really good friend of his. He might have supported the Bonson bombing's perpetrator? We have to investigate this further. Look for hints if there really was ongoing financial support. The bank account. And that's how he and Cassandra met, because of Abe. And so, the circle is complete. But he also acted as Abe's defense counsel. So, this is why they knew each other. Abraham Goldfels was his client. What was the case about? Yeah! System? Browser history? History cleared! Today! Ah, researching the law. Wow, this guy... Nothing in the trash. Active supporter of the Children of Parges Foundation. Ah, the Parges Peacekeeping Mission. Hey, this guy's a good guy. Hmm. Ongoing financial support of our actions over the years. 
I've been skeptical about this foundation, but they've been officially approved as a beneficial operation. I guess it's a good cause after all. Not necessarily. You know, thinking about the government and all, this might be a fake corporation. Just look at South Korea right now. Look at what's happening there. Wedding! Oh my god! 1993! Holy! Wait. This is Joseph. This is Abe? Oh my god. Wow, well, we're getting a lot of documents here. Aww. That's kind of sweet. Oh, maybe they di divorced already. Who is that? Like, my first instinct is to say, Catherine Delacroix. Look, 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 okay? Graduated in 1992. Started a new law firm with my wife in 1993 after we got married. Boom! Doesn't that work? <laughs> well, we'll see if that's the case. So that's- yeah, there's a conflict we don't know about. Strange. That's it for his computer. Helping hand. What was this about again? I haven't been in contact with Abraham Goldfels for a long time. I can't meet your demands. I will deliver additional information on members of the activist group Thought. Only if you mind our agreement. Cassandra Watergate must be set free. Tomorrow, not a day later. Helping hand doesn't mean setting her free, right? That's a tall order. Huh. I didn't expect him to give in so easily. Let's wait and see where this goes the next time he talks to the members of Thought. He doesn't even know anything about the guys. Let's do this. Let's see this photo. Okay, back to this. Points out security flaws on timeline. Sure. Smart guy. Doesn't have a real life photo. Sure, why not? He might yell at me. Yes, that is definitely the dog we're searching for. Jesus, start taking things seriously, will you? <laughs> hey! If he uses the same dog across all his social media, this might still be worth it. <laughs> but maybe we won't give him the warrior of the web thing, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's his real birthday. <laughs> Interests entertaining the masses. Well, I'm not too sure about those first two, but hey, this one? This might say something about his personality. Why not? So he's hacking because he finds this entertaining? Can you explain to me what's entertaining about defacing and breaking stuff? To show that he can. He likes giraffes with hats, lazy passwords, national bread eating Olympics, all the memes. Today. And so it begins. The Web Warrior hereby declares the data wars on all of you. Data wars? What's data wars? Tell apart what's right or wrong about me and here and thou shall be rewarded. It's a trap! This guy is smart because he doesn't use his real name, but I feel like if he has friends here who know him in real life, we could probably go to the friend and find his real name. See what I did there? Taking my trophy to this copy shop to print in large format, then hang it over my bed. Lol, you made my day! That's exactly what that bitch deserves. Really like what you're doing, my friend. Thanks. A man must serve. Community! Listen, everyone! Initia made a little game for you. I call it Horn vs. Horn, and it'll be available for everyone to play soonish. Those of you who want to play it right now, drop me a line. I'll get you invited to the beta test. Play, play again and again. <laughs> So freaking close, damn it! This sucks. I lose at this thing every single time. Are you not entertained? <laughs> You're cheating. No way, Jose. My game's entirely fair. You need to play. You need to learn to play as much as you need to learn to improve your orthography. <laughs> this Sarah McGill has been commenting on every post. 
Open letter to Victor Rosen of Rosentech. Dear Victor, you are my idol. I really admire you and your style. You've got an awesome tech company you call your own and wear shiny snake leather boots that have probably been assembled by children in Utsvakia. So many hipsters look up to you, wanting to be just a little bit more like you. There is not much more a man can want in life. Something's bothering me though. As a bright star of the tech world, you've got to improve your security. Look, if I use the login like V Rosen and password da da da, it wouldn't be a big deal. No one would give a damn. Before a luminous figure like yourself? Just imagine what would happen when somebody who's nothing as benevolent as myself would find those out and post them openly, say on timelines or in any other social media platform. Embarrassing, wouldn't it be? All I demand in return is to have a chat with you personally. There's something that has been bothering me for quite some time now, even though I've got a glimpse into the Rosen Ivory Tower already. You were never available, so let's give that another try. I'll use a chat tool called Silent Scream, I've written that myself, which will connect to any other chat tool, so use whatever you like. My nick for Silent Scream is Root. Looking forward to hearing from you! Huh, he was physically at the building. So maybe Juliet's seen this person, or it's Juliet. That would make a lot more sense, wouldn't it? Of course he would have. Everyone I know who's remotely into tech or programming wants to work there. Which is quite mind boggling to me. They actually hire a lot of interns, and only a very few people ever get permanent contracts. Juliet. My Nick. Since he wrote the program, though, could we tap into that? Lol, I can imagine Rosen kicking butts with his leather boots right now. What the fuck, that for real? For real as myself. Tried the password, didn't work, fake? He probably changed to ASAP. You ever get into the chat with you? Nope, no chat, no message, no nothing, bummer. I thought so highly of him. Reading this actually reminds me of the incident where Valve got hacked. And back before Half-Life 2 came out, they somebody actually hacked into Valve and they released the source code for almost the whole thing of the entirety of Half-Life 2. It was some kid in a non-US country, I forgot where, but I think apparently what happened was that Gabe sent him an email being like, hey, good job, you have really cool hacker skills, why don't you come to the US and us, Val, we're gonna offer you our own position in the company. And that guy was like, really? Okay, I'm gonna go. But he got arrested in the airport before he even got onto a plane. And the police, the local police were telling him, it's a good thing we caught you here now because if you went to the States, you would have been thrown into jail already. <laughs> kind of reminded me of that little incident there. Not really little incident. Okay. Joseph's bank account. Oh, a big difference from Harry. Recurring donation, 1,000. Office supplies, clients, clients, sundowner, the fishing club, office rent, interest, salary. Okay. Oh. Aha! So there might be something to the connection between Joseph and Nina after all. If you can find one last indication that this might be for Nina, that would be enough for investigative custody. For Joseph? Do we want to arrest him? Or do we want to let him go and see where this whole thing goes? Internal case file, the government versus Abraham Goldfels. Oh, only two years ago! Warwick Jeffrey. The defendant is accused of breaching the terms of an employment contract with the plaintiff. The defendant had entered on March 15, 2013. He worked for the government? But wasn't he a private university lecturer? What else was he doing? Though a medical condition of the defendant could be proven by his physician, the court could see no justification for the defendant's absence from work, since the defendant appears to be in a healthy condition at the time of the verdict. The court 
was able to recognize a breach of the terms of employment contract, causing substantial losses for the plaintiff by the defendant. The defendant is sentenced to compensate the plaintiff by paying a compensation equal to his previous salary during a six-month time span. Additionally, the defendant must reimburse any salary he might have received during his absence. This case is considered highly classified. No media coverage is permitted, neither prior nor post-trial. Whoa, what is happening here? It looks like Abraham had a different job and he didn't go to it. He didn't do his duties for the six months. What was it? Maybe when we're talking about thought, that's actually something the government set up. Abraham Goldfels worked for the government. Are you positive? This is a true surprise to me. I've never heard his name here. Never. Someone must know him if that's true. But if he worked in my position, no one would know my name. Why was he sued over a breach of contract? The plaintiff's claim was granted. Inflicted by a medical condition. It's so vague. This seems to explain a lot. He felt too sick for work, tried to get out, was charged for it instead, and found guilty. Considering the facts, the bombings are starting to look like a very weird kind of vendetta to me. High time we find Abraham Goldfels. Hmm. Ooh. More stuff. More stuff. Fishing club? Welcome, friend, to the sport of fishing. Had a tough and stressful day at the office? Your boss doesn't value your work? Documents are piling up on your desk? We've all been there, buddy. That's why we founded the club. Blah, 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 blah. They get together every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. At the lake between Bonton and Farview. 25 monthly fee. Rules. Fish responsibly. Mind the environment. Members only. Don't forget to present your trophies. For any inquiries, send a mail to Chairman Dan Kingsley via Kingfisher. Please do refrain from writing into the gallery comments. Where are the gallery comments? Yeah, Kingfisher. There is the picture. And the catch of the month trophy goes to Joseph. A red band trout, 29 pounds. Congrats, mate. Holy crap, that thing is huge. Thought it was a large mouth bass first. Congrats. In dubio. Thanks, guys. Next week's first round of lager is on me. I wonder where a thing like that comes from. Never seen such a butte in the Savara. Also, cheers, Joseph. Here, here. Kingfisher, I declare this year's season closed. That's our Dan right there. He takes double the loot. Greedy Dan, greedy. I take that violates the quota, doesn't it? I am the quota. <laughs> well, even a broken clock is right twice a day, as they say. This has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with chance. Listen, and you can occasionally learn a thing, or like in this case, two. <laughs> this guy's full of himself. Hey, the he's been around for some time as a temporary member. Now he's made the best decision of his life and joined us. Please welcome to the club, Abraham. Welcome, Abe. Didn't ask last time. May I call you Abe? Welcome. Saw you around the last time. Sally didn't have the chance to talk to you. We'll do next time. What? You kidding me? Thought we were a club for men. We just let about anyone in now? What's this guy's problem? Is there any problem with Abron? You bet your ass there is, Dan. We never had a fag in the club and I prefer to stay that way. Oh. Abraham is gay? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I'm getting irritated looking at this already. Bullshit. I talked to him all evening last Tuesday. Abe seemed perfectly normal. Oh my god. 
saying that normal equals not that and being gay is not normal is just... You guys are way too behind. Why do you think this should matter? Hell yes, Norman! Fred told me he was practically asked out by him once. Proof enough that Abraham is gay, in my opinion. This is not a relevance, Dan. This is a men's club. Isn't it blatantly obvious what he's trying to do here? And he didn't even tell us straight away. The secrecy is disgusting. What? This is 2015, not 2005. What's wrong with these people? Huh, that's a real bummer. Gays don't bother me, but it's really something we need to discuss first. What? Ron does have a point there. Would you all please show some decency? You're discussing a man's sexuality on a public online photo gallery. Not only is that irrelevant to begin with, it also does not belong here. At all. Hell, it does belong here, Joseph. Why does he keep this hush-hush? He should have just told us right from the start. What? <laughs> he keeps a hush-hush because you're reacting like this, that's why. Maybe he's here only to enforce the quota or shit to begin with, so why defend the guy? We start accepting fags who are practically forced to accept women and children too. That wouldn't be the Sundowners anymore, not the one I would want to be a part of. I think leaving the Sundowners is easy then. Kickbait? Isn't it, Dan? Now I get why your wife Barbara divorced you, Joes. It all makes sense. You like the other men a little too much. Okay, divorce. I see. The conflict was with the picture, so we can put this one in now. Makes sense. He actually doesn't seem like too bad of a guy, so I didn't expect him to be... cheating on people. I don't think we should mess with Mr. Langley's private life this much. That isn't what we're after. Oh, how do we know? We don't know that. We don't know that. Now we got a new profile. My position as chairman of this club obliges me to a neutral position in this matter. I understand the argument, but Joseph is right. This is not a discussion to be held here. This has also become far too personal. It needs to be discussed between all current active members. We will hold a discussion and vote on this during our next gathering. This thread is closed. March. March. Oh. Oh no, it goes in chronological order. Hmm. Oh, and then we never found out if they they said okay or not. Hmm. Well, I guess that's that. Abe might be gay. Does that have any relevance to what we're doing? I'm not too sure. An unexpected proposal. My thoughts have been interrupted by a work proposal I consider intriguing, yet also disturbing. Dear reader, Yesterday, a most uncomfortable inquiry reached me. Out of all the possibilities the universe has to offer, this is the one I would have expected last. The government has requested me to work for them. The government. The very same government. Bringing forth the dangerous safety bill. Allowing to prosecute on suggestive evidence alone. I do not understand the nature of this call. They did their research, as they were completely aware of my views and all of my work at Stelligan. Why would they specifically call on me then? This got me puzzled to the utmost, and I cannot seem to work out what they would need me for. All I have been told is that my work would be needed on a large-scale groundbreaking project. Oh, you know where this is going already. <laughs> Buzzwords bereft of meaning. Naturally. They will not elaborate on any questions. Naturally, I refuse the contract. I have no doubt they will call again. Yours truly, Goldfells. Hey Goldfells, you can't be serious. I would not want to see you work for the government, Abe. Don't do that. Nothing good has ever come out of anything they've done. You do that and I'm out. Your most loyal reader, out. Just like that, seriously. A guest. <laughs> My friend, I have no intention to work for the government. Yet I wonder, what might be the root of all this? Whether it is something nefarious they have in store, and whether whatever it is, might be turned into something good given the right treatment. I think 
I think it's very obvious that this large-scale groundbreaking project is the Orwell security system. Oh no, oh no, oh no. What are the implications? Oh no. Well, let's keep moving forward. <laughs> That's way too much to think about. Goldfells refused at first, then took the contract after all. Only to breach it? Odd. Well, let's find out what medical condition he has. Yes. Address. As of 2015. Somehow I doubt he's around at the address. Continue your work. I'll notify you when the team has reported back to me. Birth date. PhD. BCH. I don't even know what that means. Patient has reported increasingly nagging pain in the epigastric region he experienced for several months, especially during nights. Combined with a feeling he described as similar to nausea, patient also reported decreased appetite, resulting in a loss of weight over the recent months. Patient visited due to a referral of his GP, general physician, to exclude carcinomas. So it's not a carcinoma then. Dilatation of the bile duct in the head of the pancreas. Infestation of paraaortic lymph nodes. Tumor markers. Uh oh. Oh shit. What did I just say about. It's not a carcinoma. Oh my god. A carcinoma of the size of approximately 2.8 centimeters has been found in the head of the pancreas. Several paraaortic lymph nodes. Metastasized metastases have been detected. Distant metastases on surrounding organs cannot be diagnosed. Unfortunately, the tumor is no longer operable. The patient has been informed, as well as the fact that the average life expectancy is 6 to 12 months. Though outliers with years to live exist, 2000. Hey, he's already. Is he dead already? No, he sh. Oh, I don't know. Oh my god. No, he can't be. He just sent the email to Nina. Oh no. Administering a palette of chemical treatments to improve the symptoms have been strongly suggested, but has been refused by the patient. Oh. So he's just went on to live normally, or as normally as, as he could. Oh, cancer? Yeah, like 6 to 12 months, it's well past that time already. That's so harsh, but it does mean that this man has nothing to lose. And one page is all we got. Damn. 